Hello, I'm Jan Hoagland. I'm the lead designer of Naval War Arctic Circle. I'm here to show you a playthrough. I will demonstrate how the game works and I will also show you the details of the user interface. In this scenario we are playing Russia and our objective in this game is to take out some spy ships. The area is also surrounded by civilian fishermen and we are not allowed to target them. We see that uh, the settings are on default and we change the settings to fire on all clear targets which means that our units will fire on enemy aircraft. We notice that the objective is to destroy at least two enemy ships, we are not allowed to lose three or more aircraft and we must not engage any civilian or neutral units. We first launch some air superiority fighters to regions where we expect there to be trouble. Exactly where we are sending this aircraft is something you generally learn by experience. And uh, in this case we know that we need to take on some surface units, so we also launch two aircraft that are equipped for naval strike. It's also a good idea to have a tanker plane in the air, which will make it possible for aircraft that still have missiles but are just low on fuel to refuel in the air and immediately go back into the action. Since air bases are always known to the enemy, it's uh, always a good idea to just keep the radar active. We see that our plane is already engaged uh, this uh, enemy Poseidon and it's probably in trouble. We also have engaged the enemy fighter which is a much more potent threat to our forces and we realize that the enemy will try to take out our flying radar. Uh, so we turn on the radar but we also move the plane away and uh, set up our fighters to defend it. In this scenario we greatly outgun the enemy, but we see that they have a surface ship which has a long range anti-air missiles, so we should be really careful. I think I'm sending it a bit, little bit too close to the frigate now, so I'll move it up. We have to start uh, checking out these small contacts to see which of them are spy ships and which of them are fishermen. These two, one group, is commercial fishermen, so we have to leave them alone. We move our fighter closer to the unknown target, and uh, if we turn on the radar, we should get a better... Oh yes, immediately we can see that those two are the spy ships. So we have to be careful around here, since... Uh, Enemy fighters are coming in, but we should be able to handle this situation. The aircraft we launched from uh, our airbase are not there in time, but we can see that our missile ranges are much longer than the enemy. So we can engage and we will at least force it to run back and use fuel. For escaping. So now we're just choosing our uh, aircraft with uh, anti surface weapons and we are launching missiles against the first spy ship. It's always important to realize that when your fighters run low on fuel and or missiles you should have uh, reinforcements coming. It will take some time for your new fighters to arrive so it's often inconvenient if we forget to launch them before we need them. The missile is uh, now in uh, in the air and we uh, launch one more missile just to be certain. And we see that f for now we appear to have defeated most of the enemy air force but uh, another plane is incoming. We turn up the time compression. You can use the plus or minus keys on the keypad 
or you can press the colored bar. We have new detections all the time. As you've seen, when you have a new detection, it automatically reduces the time compression to uh, 1 to 1. That can be changed in the settings. So even in this small scenario, you can see that we have to be busy defending against aircraft at the same time as uh, we are engaging the primary targets. Turning up the time compression. And we have a new detection. The enemy has a lot of aircraft ready for us, but they will probably be way too late. So we cannot even take the time to take a look at what is happening when these uh, missiles are hitting their targets. Well, it's uh, 30 seconds in real world time uh, until they are expected to arrive at the target. So in the meantime we are engaging the enemy fighters and uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep them away. And we are five seconds to go, estimated. This could be a bad day to be a spy, really. You may notice that uh, the unnecessary second missile is uh, picking up its own target. And lucky for us, uh, it's the other spy ship. So we fire some more missiles and we make sure that we win the air war down over the peninsula. We see the enemy has launched a number of other aircraft at us but um, it will be way too late to save the spy ships. So that's what it takes to win this scenario. In this second part of the playthrough we are going to look at the user interface in more detail. Here we are on the more quiet scenario where we have a bit of time to look at the different options. We can see that the main part of the screen is covered by in the main map area. This is where you will do practically all interaction with your units. On the top we have the environment, we have the time and the bar allows us to set the time compression. We have information on the top about the time of day uh, about the weather. It's a beautiful late summer day in the North Atlantic. We can select each unit with a left mouse button. We notice that when, when we select units that are in a group, we select the entire group. You have uh, your uh, aircraft, your surface vessels and your submarines are directly clickable with a left mouse button on this map. And we have our units available and in most situations you will have a specific orders that you will have to carry out. In this situation we will just go through the uh, different options in the user interface so you can be familiar with how to play the game most effectively. To inspect and specifically to select units in especially crowded parts of the map you will want to use the zoom function which you find on the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can select individual units, even if they are part of the group, or you can select the entire group. You can also swap between the 3D view and uh, the main map area. In the 3D view you can switch between the units, you can change your, the rotation, but you can't issue any orders. To issue orders to your units, you use the right mouse button. When you click, single click the right mouse button, this will be a movement order for your unit. You can hold down the control key to issue multiple waypoints, which will be executed one after the other. 
A very convenient way to control your units is to use the right click drag. This allows you to create a box which will be the patrol area for that unit. The unit will keep patrolling that area until it is given another order. You will find it very useful to use this uh, selection method to keep uh, track of your, your units and especially to make sure that your aircraft stay in the right area. You can of course box select units uh, as you can in a normal RTS, but you will find it much less useful. When you right click a target, uh, your units will engage or close and engage. Uh, in this case, it's probably unwise to send your aircraft that far north. Directly above the minimap, you will find the buttons which bring up the information panels. The units information panel lists all your units. First your bases, then your single units which are not part of a group, and then all the groups. You can find information on each unit and you can also select them directly from this panel. The detection panel works the same way. You will find the enemy bases, which are always visible, and also the enemy units that you have detected with your sensors. Also neutral units and uh, unknown will be listed in this uh, panel. The mission log is one of the most important panels in the game. You will find the battle reports, of which there are none currently, which lists everything that's being shot at in the game. The objectives is where you can see your victory conditions for this game. In this game, we need to sink at least two enemy submarines, not lose any surface ships, and we only have three hours to reach this goal. We also have a tab where we can have a look at the messages which we have received earlier that has now disappeared from the screen. The settings is one of the most important panels in the game. Here you set the rules for the entire game and for all units. You will set that all units in this case will fire on all clear targets, which applies to enemy aircraft. You can change it to fire in self-defense only, in which case only incoming missiles and enemy aircraft which are directly attacking you will be engaged or you can set all units to only fire when you give orders about it. You can also select whether you should treat detections as hostiles automatically. Unidentified targets uh, may be uh, neutrals, but if you already are convinced that there are only enemies in this mission, you can treat all detections as hostiles so they can be engaged automatically. Automatic evasion is something you normally will have turned on since it will have your aircraft automatically evade incoming missiles and attacks. Automatic active sensor response means that if you know that you, your unit is already detected by radar or sonar, it should turn on its own radar or sonar to counter detect. Time compression is an important part of this game, and you can choose whether to have time compression automatically be reduced to a specific setting when you encounter a new detection, when you receive a battle report, which is any action in the game, or a unit runs out of orders. You can set which time compression you will want in each case. The unit information panel on the lower right contains most of the necessary information for the currently selected group or unit. You can uh, select each unit in the group individually, or you can use the group button to make sure that your orders are issued to the entire group. In the information panel you find the information about the health, the active radar or sonar settings, the speed, 
its time to destination, its current orders, and you find list of its weapons. For aircraft, you can also see that you get the current bingo fuel level, which tells you when it will have to return to base. You can issue basic movement orders just by clicking on the map, but for more advanced movements, you will bring up the movement planner, which is the top button. Here you can control the altitude of your aircraft and the speed of all movement moving units. This aircraft is moving at half speed, so we can order it to go to cruise speed. We can also order it to go to medium height. The right button in the movement planner gives you the option to immediately return a unit to base. This applies to aircraft. You can show the waypoints for all units, or you can show the range, which will also tell you what is the home base of this unit. If you click the return to base button, it will return to base automatically and immediately, and this cannot be changed. In the same way, you can order direct attacks and engagements on the map, but if we want to be more precise, you can go to the battle planner. The battle planner also shows the range lines for each individual weapon when you choose it. If you choose one weapon and right click the target, this is the weapon that the unit will automatically use. Otherwise, the unit will automatically choose what is the best weapon for the job. We added a scheme where we color code the weapons based on what you can target with them. We use dark blue for submarine, light blue for air, yellow for surface targets and green is land. This applies to the weapons, to the weapon loads for aircraft and you can also see the range lines on the map. Directly underneath the weapons list you find the weapon orders, which are the same that you set in the settings panel. In the settings panel you change the weapon orders for all units. In the battle planner you only change it for the selected units. Some weapons have the possibility to fire bearing only. If you click the bearing only attack you can launch a missile without having a target. The missile or missiles will be launched and will try to automatically engage a target if it can be found. In this case, two missiles are being fired and they will move towards the destination searching for a target. These buttons allow you to set the strength of the attack, minimal, default or overkill. This will allow you to control whether to use excessive ammunition or save ammunition for another target. For aircraft, the default settings is to close and engage. If you have chosen a surface ship or a submarine, you will have to explicitly order it to move to attack by clicking the close and engage button. The sensors panel is where you control your radar and sonar and other sensors. You can set those sensors that support it active or passive. Some sonars need to be deployed to be active. These are typically towed array sonars which are on surface ships and on submarines. It will take a number of minutes before the deployed sonars are operative. The towed array sonars are generally much more effective than uh, the normal sonars which are deployed in the hull of the vessel. You can see here that the detected unit is using active radar, which is why we can detect it on a very long range without using our own active radars. Some units support special orders, like deploying mines, sonar boys, or jamming devices. 
Like we did with movement, we can give a drop sonoboy order as an area order, which will mean that this aircraft will move around in a specific pattern and it will drop sonoboys searching for a submarine. We also have a formation panel where you can change the formation of groups. The flight deck is where you launch your aircraft, either from surface vessels or from airfields on land. To add aircraft to the queue, you either click the queue button or you double click the aircraft. To launch the aircraft in the queue, you right click or you drag out the box with your right mouse button. Typically at the start of a mission you will launch a significant number of aircraft to patrol various areas and for, different, and for various jobs. We launch an AVAX aircraft and we also launch a helicopter which can search for submarines nearby. This aircraft carrier not only has a number of different aircraft, they have some of the same aircraft with different loadouts. They can be equipped for air superiority, naval strike, land attack and a lot of other options. You have for example the possibility for long range air superiority which will increase its range at the cost of its stealth. We have changed the loadout for two aircraft, they will be available in one hour of game time. Of course we have time compression. Air bases can have a higher variety of aircraft than aircraft carriers at sea. We can launch aircraft to search for submarines and fighters to escort them. We were checking out our aircraft, it appears we detected an enemy submarine. We see that uh, the Poseidon has dropped a number of sonoboys and one of them picked up an assumably enemy submarine. To make sure we get an exact fix on it, we may want to drop additional sonoboys elsewhere. We have noticed that we have set the treat detections as hostile. So we only assume this is a hostile submarine. In most scenarios, submarines will normally be hostile. Now we want to take out this submarine, which is a difficult job. We right click, bring up the battle planner and engage the enemy sub. We had a lucky first hit. The enemy submarine is now damaged and it probably will have to surface. 50% damage. We're firing an excessive amount of torpedoes at it. Surprisingly often that is necessary. Speeding up the game. And we managed to destroy one out of two enemy submarines. It may be more challenging to take out the second one since we have to move further north. 
we leave that as an exercise for the player. I hope this playthrough has helped you, and I hope you enjoy the game. Thank you.